Good morning, good morning. It's Patina from I Am The One Ministries and um, I'm here for another episode. Um, I Am The One Ministries Cooking With Cat. Um, before we actually start doing some cooking, I want to make sure I handle the Lord's business first, like his upfront and most important business, which is feeding uh, the food, the spiritual meat and manna first. Um, and then we're going to be going into some meals and, you know, things that I do. And um, there it's, it's not going to be for everybody, because, again, as God is raising each and every one of us to um, his called and chosen purpose, you'll know what he's going to require you to eat. Um, for me, I know, um, again, as I said before, he's raising me to teach. Um, I know in the books, um, I, you, you know, tell people to, you know, when you're in, um, when you're um, communing with the Holy Spirit, um, watch for the books that he's leading you towards. And, you know, it'll he'll give you an idea of, of the, you know, where he's leading you, um, what he's showing you and whose life you're, you know, that, you know, um, your your life is going to be like um, or as far as who he's calling you as far as purpose. And so I know the books that I've been led to. Um, and, you know, had to come into a rude awakening, um, it's definitely um, equivocal um, to um, Paul and and teaching like Jesus and, you know, I'm not comparing myself to them, but I know that this is what the Lord is showing me and he wants me to step into um, how he's raised them and, and that's how he's raising me. And so therefore, you know, I, um, unless the Lord tells me to, I don't eat meat. So, um, I'll, um, I can, because before I did, um, um, go into my walk, I did eat meat, but I did choose, you know, particular types of meat, but because God is doing so many wonderful things in this hour, um, I hope and pray that he raises somebody to, um, you know, um, who knows, raise meat that we can eat, you know? And that's why, you know, I know he's turning the tables, he's flipping things, um, so that, you know, people, uh, walk into their call purposes. And so, and, and if we got more kingdom people, um, to where we can, um, you know, be patrons of, you know, for us, by us. And, you know, um, again, he's separating the good from the bad figs and hence, you know, um, as he's raising people to, um, you know, again, walk and step into, uh, what they're called to do and, um, we'll have more, we'll have, you know, plenty of, um, you know, um, goods for, um, our needs. And, you know, this is what God is doing and to provide in this hour and a lot of people, because we are so, uh, susceptible to what the world has to offer. We, we, we can't separate. We feel like, you know, this is what it was supposed to be all along and it wasn't. And, you know, we're trying to make that separation and, and, and giving us that understanding that the world is of the enemy and not of God. Um, you know, it's definitely hard for a lot of people to break away from that. And hence why we definitely must continue to pray for others a lot, especially, you know, family, close people that are, you know, people that are close to us and friends. And, you know, I know with my separation, um, I haven't really spoke to family much and, um, um, <laughs> not only because of, you know, um, the separation of what God is doing, but because also because a lot are stuck, you know, if they're in this world or it's because of, you know, their choice or it's, you know, it's just, I don't know. Um, it's just, um, it's tough. It's tough. So, um, I am going to go into prayer and, um, allow the Holy Spirit to have his, his <laughs> hallelujah, allow the Holy Spirit to have his way um, in this session, in this time together. So, um, let us pray. Hallelujah. Father God, heaven, I thank you. I thank you for this day that you've given me, Lord God, given the world, Lord God. Um, we cover each and every individual that is watching in or will soon tune into this video, Lord God, with the precious blood of Jesus. We cover the U.S., Lord God. We cover, cover Russia, Ukraine, Lord, Lord God. Um, we cover all those that are in need. We cover those that are um, coming into their awakening, Lord God. We pray that we um, they have a hunger and thirst um, to seek your face for prayer, Lord God, for righteousness. Righteousness, Lord God, we pray um, um, that they um, come into a hunger and righteousness into 
um, wanting more um, manna, more of your, your provision from heaven, Lord God, to know um, what you're doing in this hour. I pray that your people are blessed um, by these videos, Lord God. I know that this is what um, you are doing and this is what you're calling me to do, Lord God. And um, you said that you will pour out your spirit um, on all flesh and that your word will be preached at, to the ends of the earth. And this is a part of it, Lord God. Um, we we um, bless you. We praise you. We magnify your holy name. We thank you for everything that you're doing for us all in this hour, Lord God. And if you be for us, who dare come against us, Lord? And if you for us, Lord God, we should also be for us. Lord, we thank you for investing in us, even though we don't deserve it, Lord God. We thank you and we really appreciate it, Lord God. We are so grateful. Father, we bless your holy name and we magnify you. We know that you are going to get the glory in all of this in the end. In Jesus' blessed name, I pray. Lord, I ha have your way. Holy Spirit, you just fill this place up and you give us the manna. We, you give us everything that we need in this time that you want us to know. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So again, the Lord's word is temple restoration. He's restoring the temples, Lord God, um, is doing a mighty thing um, in heaven. Um, Jesus, Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just still, I'm still there, like literally <laughs> in prayer. I'm like in two places. When you walk in the spirit, literally, you're like in two places at one time. So it's just like, even as I'm talking to the cameras, like I am like literally still addressing the Holy Spirit. And so, um, um, and so, yes, our Father in heaven is just doing some mighty, wonderful things. And um, again, I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. So temple restoration is um, our Father's, um, um, what he's doing in this hour. This is what his quest is. And, um, and for as many as people that he is raising and, and has on the ground, um, doing, you know, their part and their leg work, um, for the harvest is, is definitely going to be plenty and the laborers are very few. Um, and just trying to galvanize, you know, brothers and sisters who are still trying to figure it out. Um, we, you know, time is ticking. So, but anyway, um, temple restoration, you know, God is separating the good figs from the bad figs. And, and then in this hour, you know, in this video, part two of this video, he's, um, you know, giving us information on what to eat. And so I broke out, um, this, um, topic matter on, um, on, um, just different segments according to the word in the Bible and, and scripture that I pulled, um, and in conjunction with the Holy Spirit and, and, and how he's guiding me on what we should know. And yesterday we went over like the beginning of, you know, temptation and, and moderation and eating in moderation. Um, so what to eat, you know, according, you know, temptation, um, you know, just identifying when we, we get to that point to with, with, you know, um, not trying to figure out what to eat, but yeah, what, you know, trying to, not only trying to figure out what to eat, but, you know, applying that, that topic matter when it comes to what to eat, you know, how do we handle temptation in that moment? You know, when we're, um, you know, applying what to eat, um, in, in the situation and what to eat could not, it's not only, um, got my props today. It's not only like, uh, natural but it's also you know spiritual it's also you know where do we um where do we um invest you know what do we invest in you know what to eat remember i said financially um medically um it 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 goes you know what to eat goes so much further than um naturally um but it definitely does impact us naturally because these are the things that the enemy uses against us so that's why the lord is separating in this time the good from the bad so that you know those who are partaking in the, the food that the lord is offering in this time and this hour you know he's 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 separating to so that we can just always only partake in good food and and what to eat so those um good figs that are just wanting to eat only good and you know 
following um, the Lord, then that's what you'll, that's what we're, we're gearing up for. That's what we're preparing for. And this is what the Lord is doing in this hour. And those who choose to stay within the ways of this world, the bad figs, um, of which, you know, he'll work that out with you, you all later. And, um, um, he'll meet you where you are, um, at the end of the day. So, but in today, um, we're going into, um, just want to put this back. Um, we're going to go into spiritual food. So what to eat part two, we're going to go to go into spiritual food and, um, the, the topic matter just matters are spiritual food and holy temple, um, the holy temple and, you know, as your bodies are a holy temple as, you know, as a living sacrifice. So, uh, the scriptures I'm going to read from, so I'm going to go over the topic matter for this first, um, spiritual food. I'm going to go into Psalms, Matthew, John, um, and first Corinthians. Yeah. So, all right. So what to eat with respect to spiritual food? I'm going to read Psalms 34, 8, and 9. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. So, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Um, and looking at this world, um, what else, what do we have to lose if we just take that time to just invest in, into seeing what the Lord has to offer. Um, I think I was, I don't know if I've explained this on this channel, but I know I've explained it. I know we're going to be teaching on it. And um, it's a lesson that the Lord had given me when um, it was a word he had given me. He was just basically saying, do you want a monarchy or do you want to, do you want to be ruled under a monarchy or, you know, a Lord and Savior. And so when I say monarchy, um, you know, we, we had, you know, Adam. Um, we went, you know, Adam, who, who was next? Was it Abraham, then Noah, Noah, Abraham. I don't know. But all again, all of them were under Moses, God's leadership, right? There was no presidents. There was no kings. There was no... And, you know, it wasn't until, you know, we got to uh, Samuel and Eli. And then that's when the people wanted a king like the Gentiles. They wanted a king. And so hence, you know, God raised up a man, which was Saul. And then but God knew, like, once you go under the the rulership of man, he knows man's heart. And then, you know, as we are under the man, the rulership of man, we will suffer you know, if, if, if man's heart is not, you know, that's why David, he was after God's heart and he, he knew God's heart and he treated the people according to God's heart. And so, you know, um, a lot of them, yeah, when you are under the Lord's rulership and under, um, one who is chosen, who is after God's heart, you will literally get to understand and taste and see, um, that the Lord is good. Um, by one who is really operating under, you know, um, under God um, through his his ways and his acts and, and his will and understanding um, to um, treat the people accordingly. But if you're doing it under man's ways and man's is subject to Satan, um, so hence why we're facing what we're facing now. So, you know, when we, when we lean not on our own understanding or the understanding of other men and we trust and we taste and see what the Lord has, we know that he's got our back and our fronts, our sides. He, he just has us. And, you know, we have to understand, you know, that he is good and, you know, when we fear him, you know, the part, um, 34, um, Psalm 34 and nine, it says, Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Um, you know, when you fear the Lord, you know, a lot of people think of it as afraid, but yeah, um, it's respect. It's that love. And when you respect 
It's just like respecting your parents, respecting another person. Um, it's like a healthy, it's a healthy fear. And, um, but then also there is that other fear to where that, um, what I believe this, this also means for this particular scripture verse, Oh, fear the Lord, ye saints, for there is no want in them that fear him. I know that I don't have to want for anything, like, especially when fearing another man, I don't fear man because if I have a healthy fear for the Lord and then also that fear that, you know, hmm, okay, he's the creator. He created the world and he created me and you're coming after me and he created you too and he can get rid of you <laughs> or, you know, not necessarily get rid of you, but handle it. I don't have to want for anything. So, yeah, um, that that's says it right there in the nutshell according to psalms um 34 and 8 you know you know he is good and um everything that i've won since i've been awakened everything that i've you know when i look at back at my life living in this world and living under the rulership of the monarchy of satan you know as run by man wow boy if I would have grew up in Christ, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But, you know, again, um, this is what it is. And I just hope and pray many people waken soon. So I'm going to go into Matthew 4, um, chapter 4, verse 4. Um, and it says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. So this is when Jesus was being tempted by the enemy. And, you know, again, like I said yesterday, I was like, how are he going to tempt the word with the word? And he is the word. <laughs> and so, you know, Jesus was just like, bam, you know, man shall not, you know, just live on bread alone. He tell him to sit up here and make some stones into bread or whatever have you. And, you know, Jesus was like, I ain't beat. Like, I don't need stones and the dog on bread. What you talking about? And if I want it, I can get it anytime. And, you know, we should know the same as for us. And, you know, um, I've said it before and I'll say it again, you know, as we're approaching, you know, what was once now food shortage now turning into a famine. Um, and I've been seeing a lot of YouTube videos come up in my feed with farmers giving warnings. I've been seeing them before and now I'm seeing them a lot more to where farmers are warning people about the upcoming you know, they're sitting up here saying that it's no more shortages. Now you're, you're literally looking at not shortage, but empty itch. You know, I, I, if, if that's a word, it's a, you know, it's going to be empty, not okay. Shortage. Okay. This will be in, in another two weeks. Uh, or, or no, it's just, no, it's not going to be produced at all. And a lot of these farmers who are, you know, can't, can no longer afford to, you know, produce for the general public, they're only producing for themselves. And, you know, they're, you know, they're the ones, you know, that's going to survive. And, uh, you know, I was saying, and I was on, I had went to Brother Whitfield's first conference um, back in February. And I was sitting on, I was on the flight and I was sitting next to a farmer in, in Jersey. And um, he's from Jersey as well, going, going to Florida. Florida or something yeah going to a wedding all right and um so he you know was just talking about you know how tough it is and this that and the other and how you know how they had a lot of acreage and you know but it's to the point to where they're just going to be farming for themselves or whatever have you but this is also still like if, if you know trading and bartering and doing you know that type of stuff this is still a good time in the season for them too, because any overages or whatever have you for people who are able to still go and get food from a farm, um, then the farmers, you know, I mean, it's still going, it's going to be tough for them because it's not, you know, they're not going to be able to do for the general market. I, you know what? I still think it's just tough for them overall because they got to pay a lot of upfront costs and things like that. Like there's the, you know, 
the the enemy the system has changed so many things that they can do you know as far as like controlling their seed what they can grow you know these a lot of farmers were you know they've grown a, according and accustomed to what god you know had intended you know now you know you got you producing a lot of stuff that's either fast or um just to keep production up like the greed like it's so it's changed the farming market so much to where the people don't even realize what the farmers are up against especially when they sign these deals this is why the lord is he is he woo, i cannot wait but anyway um and i just pray that, you know hang in there farmers i don't know who going to hear this but um you know the god is he's jesus is flipping them tables he done he done created that whip and that cord he's flipping these tables get your head steadfast um in in seeking the lord seek his face and 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 just keep your head in the game of knowing that god is going to change things and you know even though it seems and that might be a that's this might be a better thing getting the government out of your business and and just start marketing to the general public and again because the thing is is like you know when the farmers like it's, it's not like that it and especially this is what you know um my the the, the guy that was in the, the seat next to me um he was explaining how you know um when they produce it's like they don't they don't really get to see like that turnaround is it the the stores make it you know better business than they do and so now if you got somebody coming straight to you it's, it's, it's kudos for you. It's kudos for you. Um, so I just hope and pray like this, you know, this will be a blessing for the farmers. Um, because again, this, this is where we started. This is where we started. And, you know, um, our, our first, um, who, who was it between Cain and Abel? Cain, um, he, till the ground right and Abel he he was the um the sheep or the you know he was the herder he handled the, the animals um so you know our life mainly is um caring for the earth so um but you know just to keep going on you know just to move on because I know it, I can I can go on um but um these the things are going to change and you know we don't need you know bread alone and again with everything that's coming up and you know shortage of you know this is going to force people into a fast or it's going to force them to not eat so frivolously frivol little, frivolously the way they used to and as you start to you know like the less you feed your flesh it's because it's, it's, it's the food is the very sin that has the flesh up the way it has that 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 sits up here and 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 beefs up everything else all the other sins this the sin of you know lusting after the the flesh you know lusting after the flesh the sin of lusting after the flesh um the sin the lust of the flesh because of food you know our eyes or whatever have you the lust of the flesh which is the food it, it seems like it heightens it elevates everything else so that that main sin is now about to be brought back down into submission and then it's going to bring it's going to awaken a lot of people and yes for Matthew 4, 4 says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And so there's going to be many without food. They ain't going to have no choice but to sit up there and listen to the words that come out of the mouth of God. I don't know what's going to transpire and what's going to happen in these days. But if if, if it gets to that point, boy, oh boy, we all of us going to be in for the rude awakening. And we, we ain't going to have no choice. And hence why the spiritual food, get into it. Because you're going to be listening to the words that come up out of the mouth of God. And you are going to be fed. And you're going to need that spiritual feeding because it, it will nourish you. And, you know, you will get to know and taste and see that the Lord truly is good. And the things of this world, which was killing you all along and, and, and 
keeping you in the darkness and putting a cloud over you and you know it, it the the veil of darkness is is what's what's been keeping us deceived for so long so again um we we're walking into some times to where only god can get us out and so we we are going to taste and see that he is good um and i'm going to read now for you here in matthew 5 and 6 um chapter 5 verse 6 blessed are they um, which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. So those who are already in the Lord and we're hungering and we're thirsting and we're seeking his face diligently, you know, um, we, we, we are filled. And I explained before how I, you know, how I spiritually eat the flesh of Jesus and I drink the blood of Jesus. And so, you know, um, there are times to where, yes, I'll dry fast, no water, no food, um, for whatever reason being sometimes, yes, I have to fight and, you know, being that watchman and, um, you know, uh, it's, it's not a, you know, it's not an easy task being a watchman. It's definitely like being in the military to where every, you know, you're overseas or you're, you're just away from your family, you're overseas or wherever you are, you know, fighting for the country, fighting for your family, whoever you're praying for. You're separate and apart from everybody and you're, you know, you're getting, you know, the words and the commands of who you need to pray for. Um, you're up on the watches, whether it be 12 in the morning, three in the morning, five, six, whatever clock in the morning, um, you know, praying and, you know, even throughout the day praying, um, um, you're, you're doing the work and things other people otherwise would take. For granted and they don't know that you're doing these things on their behalf and it's again same as you know again military um these guys are over there you don't know you know you don't know what missile just flew over their head just just whatever and you know yet and still we get to sit up here and be over here having our barbecues and this that and the other and you know that's not cool. You know, like we definitely like, and then, then we, we, we got a holiday and then having another barbecue to sit up here and celebrate them. Like, can we come up with some more better, you know, uh, gratitude -ish ways to, you know, acknowledge what they're really doing? Um, because it's this definitely, deserve and this is why god wants the glory for the things that he does and he does deserve them and so you know we do have to understand that you know a watchman's lifestyle is definitely like not easy when when you're called to fast when you're called to pray and you know um i i say it like this like when it when the word says you know like um, don't be like the Pharisees and, and, you know, make sure don't, don't have on that sad and countenance face or whatever. Um, you know, and that's not what this is me, you know, either complaining about whatever have you, you know, I'm just hoping and praying that you get gratefulness out of this message. You get Thanksgiving, you get gratitude and, and that you see that, you know, you know, gratitude needs to come from this. And, um, and um, you you won't take life for granted, mainly your own, um, because again you got people on the, the back lines, you know, on the on the battle lines, on the or on the battlegrounds, on the front lines, fighting for you, and you're not fighting for yourself. And you know God is bringing to your attention; He's bringing to my attention. I've seen many visions, um, not only family members but other people that I don't even know I'm praying for. And, you know, when I'm in my closet or in this room or just whatever, have you, this whole house is anointed. It, it'd be so funny. My husband be walking up in this house. Um, I still, I'm still praying for my husband too, but I know God has a plan for him. He come up in here. There's times where he be like, he feeling lightheaded or, you know, he, he, oh, it, I'm telling you, I'm like, I, I just have to laugh because I just be like, yeah, the Holy Ghost is all up in here because he, he just feel like, like faint and he, he don't believe me. He do not. I mean, he trusts, he, he believes in God, everything, but he just like, yeah, like <laughs> it just be so funny. Um, but he just think like either, I don't know, he, it, 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 is he don't have no problems all day, but then when it seems like he either walks through this room or like comes a portion part of the house or whatever have you, he just you know he just say oh I just went up I just came downstairs and I was like oh I I just have to laugh but 
he just don't trust that I literally like the Holy Ghost and the fire and everything. But the one thing I, I believe he does believe, well, he believes because he's witnessed too much stuff. But the, to to um to feel that the Holy Ghost is actually making him faint or like come into that, you know, to where like some of the stuff that he's seen on TV, he just don't believe it's in this house. So, um, but in due time, in due time. But um, anyway, um, that's just, just something that's funny. Um, but yeah, but when you eat what you eat and, you know, um, again, you know, just seeing the things um, again, and I don't say it, you know, you know, as a complaint or whatever, but, you know, we just take so much stuff for granted. And I just hope and pray that you guys see these things and, you know, and, and as the Lord is showing me um, and, and, and growing into and even understanding being a watchman. Um, I didn't know what that meant. And so, you know, a lot of people's are like, why y'all, you know, all these doom and gloom prophets and stuff. And this is what y'all, you know, this is all y'all talk about. Listen, if this is what the Lord impresses upon you and out of obedience, this is what you have to report. This is what you need to report because God's obligation is to warn the people and he warns the people through his prophets and whom he told. And so therefore, if I sit up here and not out of obedience because of what man what man is complaining about, whether about what they want to hear and what they don't want to hear. Um, like I said, my, my fear is of the Lord and you know, you have to answer to him, you know, again, and, and I'm, and I'm, I'm bringing this up to say, because, you know, a lot of people are getting that backlash and you know, life is in the blood and my, nobody else's blood is going to be on my hands because I didn't do what the Lord has told me to do. And, you know, um, and it's so funny because as I was going through this and, and this, um, as far as explaining this, um, you can commit spiritual suicide if you want to, but once I release what the Lord has told me to release, it's, it's off your blood is off of my hands. Um, and I'm going to read for you, um, where it says in Leviticus 17 through 11, for the life of the flesh is in the blood and I've given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. So us sinners out here, the, the blood is what makes atonement for it. And he who has given his son, Jesus Christ, um, to fill in that gap for us as far as the blood. That's what we can plead. That's what we can use. And, 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 and if you're wondering what atonement means, I'll even look that word up for you in, um, the Webster's dictionary, 1828, um, which I trust because, uh, he is, um, full blown believer. And, um, I trust his words because everything is biblical. And, and that, that dictionary is biblical. And I know that that's what the Lord called him to do. And I'm so, so thankful. And now it's back up and running because they tried to stop a lot of people by taking that dictionary down. And I went and bought the hard copy. So, um, but now I'm just so thankful that it's back up. But atonement, um, it's an agreement, concord, reconciliation after enmity of controversy. So once you sin, yeah, you, you definitely better get yourself purged, washed of the blood and asking for forgiveness and all of that because the atonement is the blood. It, it, it reconciles you back to the Lord. The blood reconciles you back to the Lord. And, um, because it, it was, it's the very life of which, um, he has, has given you. So, um, so therefore if the life is in the blood and you know, what is given is what shall be taken to atone for what was given. And, um, we, we are his, and, you know, and as the blood was given, the blood shall be taken for the atonement for what was given. Um, Genesis nine, five through six, I found some more. Um, so Genesis chapter nine, verses five and six says, and surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man and at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Um, so in, in verse um, six, it says, um, Genesis nine, six says, um, whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed for in the image of God, man is made um, um, in the image of God made he man. So we are his and God don't take it lightly of his creations. 
And so if you don't make it right with them, um, you're going to have to answer for it. And blood, if blood was shed, blood is what he's going to want. Um, it, it's eye for an eye, uh, blood for blood. And so again, because he's given me a word and, and, I, and I operate under sound doctrine and obedience. And if he wants me to give a word, I'm going to give that word. So whether you want to hear it or not, go ahead on um, and commit spiritual suicide because your own blood is going to be on your own hands because you denied the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So that's a little public service announcement right there for those who don't want to hear and get this spiritual food right here. Um, so I suggest you, um, you know, make that atonement ask for forgiveness and plead the blood over yourself, you better purge yourself with it. So um, just to give you an example of how I go in with um, eating the flesh and drinking the blood, you know, I'll take a minute and I'll say, I eat the flesh of Jesus. I eat the flesh of Jesus. I eat the flesh of Jesus in the name of Jesus. I eat the flesh of Jesus in the name of Jesus. I eat the flesh of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Lord, I eat the flesh of Jesus. Um, I eat the flesh of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for your precious Flesh for what is meat indeed. I thank you that is food for my body, nourishment for my soul, and strength for my walk here on this earth. I thank you for your precious flesh. I eat the flesh of Jesus. I eat the flesh of Jesus. You know, I'll mix it up. You know, I'll say I eat the flesh of Jesus in the name of Jesus. I'll go in and I'll just say I'll eat the flesh of Jesus. I can go for a minute to three minutes to five minutes. I went up to ten minutes. And yes, I tell you, it yo Spirit, boy, oh boy, will take over your body like nothing. I told y'all before, when I went to go try to take a nap, <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> and it was just so funny. And I totally forgot how a spiritual nourishing meal will, it will galvanize you. It literally would. It's, it's, it's like, it's like an energy drink. I've never had an energy drink. I've had some Mountain Dew in my days. Or you, it's just almost like, no, it's like a caffeine shock. Um, if I want to like kind of give it like an analogy or like compare it to something, but it is, it is amazing and it works, which is so cool. And I'll, you know, not only will I do the, the, the flesh of Jesus, but I'll do the blood of Jesus. Um, and then sometimes I'll do them enter, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, if I do the blood of Jesus by itself, cause I'll do them both. I'll do, you know, one minute. It depends on what I, you know, just doing. And especially if I'm covering myself as well too, or covering my family. I'll just sit here, sit here right here in this room. And I, that's why this, this, this room, this house, open heaven, um, are so anointed. And, um, but yeah, I drink the blood of Jesus. I drink the blood of Jesus. I drink the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Sometimes I'll do it to some, um, soaking music of the Holy Spirit. If y'all, um, um, look that up, um, brother, um, what is it? Jim Ken, um, I forget his name, but his, his music is so anointed and um or some I'll, I'll find some anointed music to do it to because there was times the way i just like i drink the blood of jesus I, I had done some like you know something funny like just to try to get myself through it and i heard in my spirit like oh you playing with your food and it was just so funny i was like whoa like no i'm not playing with my food it was just so funny and it was just so cute and our father is just so loving and just so wonderful and so, but yeah, so that's a way to have spiritual food. So you can cover yourself, cover your family. Um, and you know, it's, it's such a blessing, but I'm going to go on. I hope I'm, I haven't gone off topic, but just knowing that you can, you know, be spiritually fed by, um, focusing on the Lord. And so John three, um, I'm sorry, John six, Verses 35 says, and Jesus said unto him, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. And so it is Jesus. He's the way he's the truth and he's the life. And, um, he is the way he's the gate. He is the one. And, you know, again, being the bread of life, um, during the last supper, he, he, gave his disciples um as a partake of bread not only did he give them the bread naturally but he told them what it meant spiritually and you know what we have to go to as a spiritual food spiritual nourishment and you know again as um you know even as he as jesus when he said that man should not live on bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of god it is just that spiritual food that you know we need and if god's word is what we have to look for because we're spirits first. We were created 
first before we were formed. So obviously it would make sense for us to um, attach and identify with our spiritual side, our father side of our family. And, you know, again, our flesh side, the mother side is just, you know, as it is falling now, it's, it's just going to fall away. And hence why the Lord is stepping in to, you know, keep us sustained for these last days, these end times. And, you know, we got to partner with him and get on his side to make sure that we're doing everything that we possibly can to work with him because he knows all. And if he sees what's going on with the food supply and, you know, getting us on that right track to make sure that we're eating foods that's good for the body that he designed, not man, but he designed. So he knows. So it's definitely beneficial for you to, you know, um, take in this information and, and, and get all that you need from out of it. But again, John 6, 3, 5, you know, Jesus identifying himself as the bread of life and, you know, saying that, you know, man will never hunger again and you know one will never thirst because he is he's the living waters as well so um definitely seek the scriptures as you know for your spiritual food and john um chapter 6 verse 51 i am the living bread which came down from heaven if any man eat of this bread he shall live forever and the bread that i will give is my flesh which i will give for the life of the world and that's what he did. He gave himself, Lord Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Here I am about to go into like either prayer. Or just, I'm just about to acknowledge the Lord. Like, thank you, Lord. Like, Lord God, yes, thank you. He He, he has, he's given himself for us and um, just acknowledging him for what he's done. Um, no man could ever do what he's done and they're not capable of doing it and we we couldn't possibly fulfill because we we got spots and blemishes all over us so the blood is definitely something that we need and the flesh in order to um make an atonement for what god will um say will suffice to come before him to be holy before him and and that's why you know in the next um section of this um making sure like we make ourselves a living sacrifice we have to come um holy before him and so you know with um going into the next one you know um baptism by spiritual food and um you know this says wilderness warnings that's my topic first corinthians um chapter 10 verses 1 through 6 um they say and moreover brethren i would not that ye eat, um that ye should be ignorant how that of all of our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all um, were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drink of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. Hallelujah. But with many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Hallelujah. So yes, um, our forefathers, um, th this is just talking about, this is Paul talking here, just giving the example. Um, they were under that spiritual cloud that they, they were literally, the word was literally, you know, guiding them. They got that manna, like, and just, they had the meat, the spirit, and they were eating, they were partaking of the same spiritual food. And to, again, um, and then again, the, the, the crazy thing, it, it was Jesus, it was the word, it was they drink from the same spiritual um, rock, which is the, the Christ, the rock, and then the spiritual meat, the food of which they had, they was under the same umbrella. And the Lord is hallelujah, reminding me that um, this is, wow, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, because you just know where my mind was going because there was something that I needed to remember from this. Um, um, chapter... Um, Verse, verse five of chapter 10 says, but with many of them, God was not pleased. Um, I, I explained the other day how we met other um, Christians, other believers in Christ, but they were Mormon. 
um, and just going into the verses to where um, God says in the word that, you know, whoever is um, working with us and whoever is for us, you know, and, and preaching and, and casting out demons in, in Jesus name, then whoever is for us, then, you know, leave them be, you know. So if they're drinking up the same spiritual food and they're operating in the same, you know, just doing, you know, according to the word, you know, have, you know, preaching according to the same spiritual meat, you know, so what is it to you, you know, that, you know, just because they're not with us, but if they're for us, you know, if I'm for them, who dare come against them? And, you know, if God knows their heart, then, you know, and I believe that this is what he's bringing to me for unity because it's just amazing how I got to meet these two young women and um, we're going to meet again because I'm just I'm, I'm, it's, I'm just curious because this could bridge the gap between, you know, um, the, 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 the divination, the divisions, you know, of course we have false religion. And, you know, if I've talked about religion, I'm talking about false religion. You know, they're like, if you get offended because I've said something about, you know, or spoke on um, religion, I'm speaking about false you know, now, um, there are, you know, of course, I guess these practices, but we have to understand that God is relationship. He's not religion. Um, but if you are under, you know, what the general term for religion is because you, 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 your ministry operates under a different name or, you know, practice or whatever have you, then, you know, then that's when I identify it as religion. Um, but, if it's under a religion that's, uh, it's definitely Christ related and you are doing what he's calling you to do and what your ministry is supposed to do, then who am I, you know? And so, and, and it's up for us, as long as we, he, he's given us all these clues, you will know them by their fruit. You should know your father's voice. If you know your father's voice, what's the problem? I don't understand. You know, we just so quick to sit up here and judge. And, you know, I believe that's what the Lord has taught me and all of this too. So again, you know, um, baptism by spiritual food and, you know, wilderness warnings. Yeah, when we're out there, when we're, you know, in our flesh and ourselves or whatever have you. And, you know, we, we got to be mindful of the things that we're lusting after. And we can't lust after the evil things of like quick to judge somebody because, um, they have the label of, you know, whether it be, um, just whatever their, um, the guidance of, cause I, I, when I, I asked the Lord and I was just saying, I said, wow, you know, this was so cool dad, you know, like, um, I, I didn't even know that there was like Christian Mormons out there. Just like, there's just like Christian, Christian Jews and stuff like that. Like Rabbi, Rabbi Snyder. I love Rabbi Snyder. Um, and I was just like, wow, like there's so many difference in Christians. In. And I was just like, so why do they have the Book of Mormon? Like, why do they have that book? And the, clearly just came in, in, in my spirit was like, if they somebody wrote a book and it's, if they use it as a guide. But the, the Bible, you know, my word pretty much like, it's just like how he had me write a book. And it's and anybody. And then that's why we refer to scripture. Um, anybody can write a book and it, it, and it could be their guide. And so they have a guide. And I'm like, oh, so, and it's just so cool, you know, our shower time and just, you know, bathroom time alone, because that's, he just shows up. <laughs> it's amazing, but he shows up um, in that bathroom. Um, but it's it's just so amazing. And, you know, when you get in that spiritual, you know, food like that, you know, don't, don't deny. And then, you know, again, these women, they didn't deny. Like, uh, I know that there's a lot of people who claim, you know, they have Christ, but boy, they deny the power. These women, they did not de deny the power whatsoever. So they didn't, they didn't sit up here, have a form of godliness. They definitely walked in godliness and, you know, they literally did not deny Christ whatsoever. There was no, end, but there's more, I really want to dig in and, and, and really, get more from them and i'm just so thankful that they're gonna you know meet with us again and so we're just gonna just talk about our our stories and how we've come into and you know with the lord and under you know the the different callings and differences and you know how we could come to know and love christ so but anyway but first corinthians um, chapter 10 verses one through um, six, you know, it talks about how all was under the same cloud, but then because of the lust um, after evil things, and we got to watch, you know, yeah, we under the same cloud, 
um, different ministries, differences. There's going to be some differences, but um, we, we have to understand our father's voice. We have to know our father's voice. We have to know his acts, his ways, his will, and, you know, maintain that same spiritual meat but know that you know just like how my skin is black and theirs is white or you know you got asian just whatever have you there's differences same spirit different you know different um outer skin you know again our spirits is is, is the same and i'm gonna show that the next time but um as far as the spirits, because that's something um, God showed me that was um, good. And we got to understand that God won't be pleased with um, behaviors unless you make that atonement, unless you make it right and ask for forgiveness. Um, you better get on that Lord's Prayer because um, that'd be the, one of the best and easiest ways for you to, you know, be. if you don't know what to say besides asking the Lord for forgiveness, um, ask him to forgive you for your sins as you, for, you know, you forgive others. And so as we go into the, the temple um, as a living sacrifice, um, um, I'm reading Romans, um, the infamous Romans 12, 1 through 2. Um, so pre present your body as a living sacrifice. And so Romans um, chapter 12, verses 1 through 2, um, it begins with, I beseech you, um, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It is our reasonable service to at least maintain what God expects of us. So if he expects of us to, you know, um, especially like living in righteous Abraham, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, God, I was telling you, I got God on my mind. <laughs> I'm living half and half, y'all. Um our father of our faith, he, he, it was his righteousness, you know, he, you know, was, um, he was justified by his righteousness and that was the, his obedience. And so long as we, we walking and we living in that obedience and the word, um, is, is just that. And so long as we, we're operating under that word first, using it as our sound, um, foundation of where, how we walk in. And then, you know, of course the obedience to God, you know, it's, it's that righteousness. So as we, we, we do that first, it is our reasonable service. This is what's expected of us as reasonable. So this is like, just like the baseline of, of what's required. Um, so you're going to have those one talent, two talent, or was it one talent, two talent, five talents? Yeah, something like that. But if you just got that one talent, that basis as, as far as like righteousness, as far as like, you know, what God is expecting of you, because he ain't going to give you no more than you can handle. Then if that's all that's your reasonable service, then just strive for it. You know, you can try to supersede it. You know, he'll be proud of you, of course. He's proud of you regardless. But so long as you just, you know, um, strive for the reasonable service of being righteous and presenting yourself, your body, you know, with respecting others, respecting that other person. Because remember, blood, blood is going to be required of blood. So if you hurting somebody and they take their own life or whatever, yes, that person that just took their life, their blood for what they've done because of what you said have done is on your hands. You got to answer for them. Uh, and unless you make that atonement, because he's going to come after your blood now, because guess what? You're his, just like they were his as well, too. So again, we're his, we're his prize possessions, we're his period. So he's, he's like a, a daddy. Our father is like a mama bear. And just like, I don't know, you better not mess with me and my kids. Um, so yes, that's, that's just his, that's him, his protection. That's how he is. Um, he is, um, aggressive when it comes to what's his and he owns it all. Psalm 24, 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and those that dwell therein. So, um, yeah, you got to know him. You got to know his his mind. You got to know his ways. Um, and, and one of the best ways to know that is through spirit and knowing him spiritually. And so just moving on. And so be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove that it is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So this is how you proven it, you know, um, by being renewed, by being transformed. So if the ways and the things of this world, if you're not conformed by it, just like, you know, um, I, I believe 
what they um in first corinthians 10 1 through 6 they were under the spiritual meat and, and no sooner than they got from up under the cloud of jesus they they got lost because the the, the lustful ways of this world they they got conformed back to the world again and so you know they didn't stay transformed by the renewal of their mind while they were under that cloud for long and we we have to understand what it is that pleases god and we we have to be spiritually reconciled and hence why i'm the one ministry spirit school is i just is is i'm i'm so excited and this is what the lord is raising us to do um for this world and you know for just whomever like he's going to bring before us and who you know we're going to go before and you know help spiritually um reconcile and reconnect to our father and this is just like the meat of it this is just the beginning of it and as, as far as what I know he's doing in our lives and, and what he's calling us to do. And I'm just so thankful all the more that I've been awakened in a time as this to do just this. And so I'm going to move on. But, you know, you know, Romans 12, 1 and 2. And um, it's it's just such a, um, you know, well-known verse and, and um, scripture. And I, I believe we take it for granted you know, we, we get so used to saying, you know, be not conformed to the things of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. But we forget that, 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 that last very, that last part that says that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God, that good and acceptable, perfect will of God is being renewed and being transformed and not conformed. So if you are so stuck on this world and you're eating only what's of this world, and you're not proving what's that good and acceptable will of God by 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 having your mind renewed and transformed. You're missing it. You're missing it. And and you you are not you are in at enmity with the Lord. And you are you are a bad fig. You are not his. And and I'm only saying these because I know my father's voice. These are his words. This is what's in his word. This is Jesus. These are the same words and terms that he would use. So sound doctrine. I know the sound of my, my father's voice. I know his voice. And this is what it is. If nobody is speaking the same way, then they don't know him. They don't know him. And, you know, what, what are they saying? You don't know God. You're not of God. And love is not in you. You don't know him. And, and that's just point blank. And so um, I go, I move on to Romans 14 and 17. Um, basically, you know, it's, it's, it's describing like what is the kingdom of God for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost and so um it is nothing of this world um not natural meat it is not natural drink it is not you know any of these things naturally of this world but it is righteousness and you know again because Abraham was justified for his righteousness through his obedience you know is is that very thing that God is looking for in this hour because we are the descendants of Abraham and, you know, so it's, it's, it's just those things. And it, it, it's a good righteousness is such a good feeling. And, and there is joy and peace in it. And, and the Holy Ghost is just, it's just such a beautiful thing. And so just to know that the kingdom of, of God is not those things, um, these things that our, our flesh lust, lust after, um, we got to know that there's an afterlife life that's going to to where these bodies are going to die away with this earth and we're going to know that you know our formation is going to go with the earth of which it was you know created you know like formed from and our creation is going to go back to the creator um i don't have the scripture um but it does you know god you know because he's 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 the giver of you know the souls and spirits like he's the one that's going to take it back with him and so hence why um, we should know and understand that, you know, there's either one way you're going to, you, you're, you're going to live eternity. Um, you're either going to go up or down and, and he's, de he decides that. And so, um, first Corinthians six through 19 and six, 19 through 20, chapter six, verses 19 to 20, um, the temple of God. Um, and, and a lot of people, we don't, we don't realize this. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not of your own? Yeah, so that spirit, that the creation um, is God. And it's, it's you know, 
we 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 were like the mini me's of him and you know hence why you know eve the, why the tree was in the midst of the garden because they had to be a threshold there so that they can know that they can't you know like satan try to sit up here and 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 make yourself bigger than god and that's how he first sin sinned against god because he he sat up here and like oh my kingdoms is going to be higher than yours and this that and the other like there had to be a threshold there and they had to be you know for god to make man there had to be a threshold for us so that's why the tree was there in the midst you know the tree was in the mid and when i said miss yesterday it was in the middle like he's in the middle of something so if you had foods like sitting right here right up here like in front of your face or like within your surroundings why did you need to go to the middle of the garden in the midst of the garden where that tree you know was when you shouldn't have touched so he just wanted to create a threshold because we're we're so much like god and how the devil sat up here and just, you know, said we would die when we was already like God, we wouldn't, we wouldn't die. Um, and hence when we went against them, hence, up, oh, I got it today, y'all. I got it today. You know, having, you know, choosing, you know, like the fruit, like, you know, what, what the, the enemy was offering, you know, if the Lord said, you know, this is my covenant with you, but then here that the enemy offers his and you, you don't keep the Lord's. It's almost like you putting this down and, okay, I want this. And the Lord like, okay, um, yeah. I, what is it? Matthew 6, 24. You can't serve two. You can't serve. You can't have two masters. Um, you know, I, I want to say mammon and masters at the same time. Uh, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm like spirit and flesh. I'm like in both of both. I'm in both worlds. You can operate in both realms. Um, so my, my, um, speech is going to go that route as well too. Um, so, um, and going into, I'm sorry, first Corinthians six and 20, it says for you were bought with the price, therefore glorify in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And so if it's his and, and plus, you know, because with his only begotten son, he made atonement for us with the blood, with the blood. And this is blood without spot or blemish. Only he could have have done it and has done it. And so therefore, um, you, you are not your own, just like how it says um, in 1 Corinthians um, uh, chapter 6, verse 19, um, you don't own you, your mama don't own you, your ancestors don't own you. Um, only God Almighty owns you. The government does not own you. And we're all going to have to answer once, once our bodies pass on. And, you know, these souls um, have to let go of these bodies eventually because it's going to be right on with the spirit and, and, and answer to God where we all going to have to go. So we better we better get this spiritual food while it's sitting up here and, and understand, you know, what this means spiritually and, you know, how this is going to be a spiritual feeding. So what to eat when we need to eat, we need to get up in the word. And so, um, today's topic is surrounding, you know, you know, what to eat and, you know, as far as our spiritual food and making sure we keep in our holy temple as a living sacrifice and how we do that, we be amongst others who are in Christ and, and know his voice, know our father. Like I said, I didn't understand and know that there were Mormon Christians, Christian Mormons. And so I'm going to go and find out. And so, cause we got to stop. We got to stop this. Whatever, whatever the devil is trying to do to divide us, we we have to understand what it is um, um, that's causing the division. And and somebody's going to have to take that stand and take and make that step. So I'm going to do it. Um, we do have a meeting with them. I'm excited, and I just want I just want to see. You know, long as you do what you need to do by not allowing somebody to indoctrinate and infiltrate you with things that are not of your father, because you should know his voice. It's, it's just like you knowing your mother's and your father's voice. You are not going to let nobody sit up here and distort your, your natural mother and father's voice to the point to where you don't know who they are. Come on. So let's not get stupid. And because we're not, because God didn't make us that way, um, then that wouldn't say much for him. But, you know, because we got to give him all the glory because I'm a creation of his just like you are. And I... I I know I, I really can't speak for it, but I am. But our father did a wonderful, like, I, there's no words can even just ex express. And I'm definitely not going to sit up here and and um 
just Jesus, not glorify my father for, for what he's done for us and, and, and his creation. I'm not going to belittle it and it's belittling him. What, 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 what a slap in the face. So we have to understand like, you know, what it is that we, 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 we got to think about this. So, you know, the, the substance of our spiritual food, who we have around us, you know, it's again, what we eat, you know, um, again, financially, medically, who are we dealing with? You know, knowing, you know, good fig from bad fig and, and learning how to separate according to how our father is separating. Um, it's the same as what your natural mother and father would have done when you were a child, especially if the kids down the street or whatever have you weren't good, they're going to keep you away from them. And, you know, um, if they're bullies, just whatever have you, your mom did it. Or if, you know, um, just depending upon your block, if, if, if there's, you know, some deals going on down the street, your parents don't, yeah, they're going to keep you away. So this is what our spiritual father is doing. He's keeping us away from what we should be seeing that he, we do on a, um, on a natural level every day by keeping ourselves away from things and keeping our children away from things. You're not going to sit up here and have a newborn baby. And then just all of a sudden, just, um, have that child in, in, in a room full of, um, cigarette smoke. You want to keep your child away. So that's what your father is doing. Your heavenly father is keeping us. He's keeping us away from things that are not good from us for us because he made us and he knows us by design what's good for us and what's better for us. And you know, what's blessed for us. And, and that's what he's doing in this hour and this time. So keep yourself around spiritually fed food from other people, you know, their fruits, um, by their voice and sound doctrines because they should carry the same voice and sound as our father. Um, you'll know them because if they're operating, if you're operating the way you should be, um, and they're operating, y'all, y'all going to speak the same language. There's going to be unity. There's not going to be division. And despite, despite the fact that there is, you know, difference in color, difference in a name or a title or whatever have you. So what? Long as that the foundation is the same and, and it's there and it's sound and it's on the, the same ground, the same soil, just like that, um, the scripture with the parables of the soil and, and what the seeds landed on. Like, so long as that same foundation is there, what do you have? You, you're not losing anything. And, and, and we got to stop, you know, having that mindset that, um, you know, allowing Satan to continue to divide by, um, creating like these different, you know, ideologies, like allow, you know, you yourself some time to think before you, um, have the enemy go in and use his imps or certain thoughts to sit up here and corrupt you, um, before, you know, you use the God given brain that, that, you know, he's designed and, you know, we sitting up here, we, we are belittling the brain that he's even given us because we're not using it. We use it to the capacity that, that the enemy is sit up here and, and, and allow us to self kill and destroy us. And, and by just, just falling into his hands and accepting his, his fruit and, and, and not what our father says. So stop, you know, we got to stop cursing ourselves and stop, you know, you know, ending our own lives by not thinking first and, and, or at least, you know, um, asking our father first. So, um, Colossians, this is the last of it. Colossians 2, um, chapter 2, verses 16 and 6, um, 17. I'm sorry. The substance of what um the substance of what you um of what of who you are belongs to God. So that's you know, um, let no man therefore judge um you in meat or in drink or in respect of any holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of the things to come, but the body is of Christ. So, um, the substance of what you do belongs to God. So I titled this the substance of what you do belongs to God, because the things that you do in your life, it, it you know, it belongs to God. And, and, and how, you know, again, that, that, that reasonable service, like those, those standard things, like if you're, you know, um, let nobody like judge you based off of those things. Just like how I just talked about, you know, you know, um, because, you know, she's a Mormon, you know, the, the two young ladies are Mormon, you know, Christians or whatever. Oh, you know, Mormon, but I see Christ. And then because the foundation of Christ was in their talk was in their demeanor, they going to help me move y'all. 
<laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm getting this. I'm not even getting this from my blood family. And, you know, I got, you know, my family in Christ doing this. And then, like I said, I'm going to like go in and, you know, again, I didn't get any sense of, um, you know, urgency. And I just really believe like this was divinely set up. And I'm just like, I know that the Lord is allowing me and us to see like how the enemy is really, he has us up against each other. And this ain't cool. And again, if we continue on in these ways and God is seeing this and, and, and we, we building like this hardness in our heart, I ain't answering for that. You can want to answer for it, but I'm not answering for it. Um, so let's, let's, let's correct that right now. But again, you know, the substance of what I do. So let's, let's look at this. So, you know, again, let not nobody judge us, um, in the meat, um, in judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of any holy day, um, or in the new moon or the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of the things to come, but in the body of Christ. Um, so we, we need to be looked at by how we operate under that cloud, like how, you know, again, like when it was in, in, you know, under the cloud of Christ, the rock, we, we, that's, that's how we go by. We don't go by, you know, again, skin color, a title in somebody's, um, belief or like, or how they were founded, you know, I, cause I could, I could easily sit up here and, and, and call the book of Katina. And, and this is what's based, this is, these are the guides of how I decided to, to use the doctrine on, especially when I say like my father's side of the family, our side, I could easily write a book about these things of how I've grown accustomed and how I'm, um, you know, and then, you know, who knows, like those who, who are of this same belief in faith or how, how they, you know, uh, like how I created, you know, certain cre ideologies or, you know, just terms or whatever have you. And it was easy, it was easy for them to grasp. And so long as it's based on the sound doctrine of Christ, you know, and I call it the book of Katina. And, and this is how people were able to, um, you know, come into the love of Christ for it. What is wrong with that? What is wrong with that? There's nothing wrong whatsoever. So long as it's again, according to the sound doctrine and the Lord knows your heart and you're walking in obedience. And if he says accept is acceptable, then who are we to judge? We're not the judge. He is. And if he knows the heart and what the basis of what it was, and if you got souls, woo, that's blood you done captured and took away from the devil. Hallelujah. So I just hope and pray that this word has blessed you. And as far as you know, what you should be eating spiritually and how you should be um, feeding your body as a, um, you know, um, you know, just present your body as a living sacrifice, you know, through your holy temple and, and because he, you know, indwells within you, um, what you should be eating and the foundation of it should be Christ the rock and it should be sound doctrine, sound, um, just, um, word scripture it should be the foundation the voice of god is his sound and his sound is his voice they are one and the same and that sound is doctrine and it is he he does not deviate he it is it's foundational it is the very concrete of where you you know what how you should be operating under our father how he has you function in ministry through, you know, whether it's deliverance or whatever, I don't know, Mormon, you know, long as you got that soundness of his voice and, you know, you, you heard my voice throughout this whole video, long as it sound the same throughout the whole, you know, the span and it doesn't change or deviate from that. And that's the thing. That's how, how Eve got, got, because she allowed the enemy to, um, to come in through a serpent and, and, um, he used the serpents as a voice box and changed the sounds of the Lord just by changing some words around. And we doing the same thing now. We doing the same thing now because our flesh wants to get all up in itself. And, you know, we see difference and we don't, we don't like it for what, but anyway, not to continue on, um, 
but I hope and pray um, this has fed you and this was some, you know, some good food um, for the soul. And you, this is, you, you know what to eat when it comes to um, spiritual food and, and how you should operate in your temple being a living sacrifice and everything should be under the sound foundational um, doctrine of Christ um, because he's the door. He's, ooh, excuse me, he's the good shepherd and um he is the truth the way and the life so um i hope this has blessed you and um my props here um one last thing um again remember yesterday i showed you um or i talked about the lemon i i turned the lemon inside out remember i said i walk I do my face and then you know here and then i'll go i work i'll look i start up and then i go down okay so um again the pulp from the lemon um you definitely can um you know use that and it's again it's, it's just like a and then you know the oils from here it's just so it smells so good but it's, it's like an astringent and because i don't again use deodorant because i don't i don't have to um because i don't have a lot my my body was literally detoxed from these 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 horrible foods um that you know it's just contaminated by what the enemy has coaxed man into um, thinking that it's healthy for them, but God is cleaning things up and and making sure that we have better things to eat. He's re raising people to, you know, come into their purpose of what they're supposed to be doing in this time, so that we could have better choices and better options. And and so you know, with that being said, you know, again, hold on, farmers, um, seek the Lord's face. I'm pretty sure He has something for you, and you know, we don't have to fear. Um, and again, because, um, government and how the Lord is moving us from this bad fig system and, and into a good fig system. And for all those who are partaking, identify, um, with their father in heaven and not, you know, with the ways of this world and being a child of the world, um, you know, God is doing some good things and you just gotta be, you know, you gotta hang in there for it. And, you know, seek refuge in him, take cover under Psalm 91 and, you know, know that, you know, um, Jesus is flipping these tables and he's, he's moving the money changers out and he's going to definitely, um, change the game here. And I'm excited about it. And I hope and pray that you are too. And, um, but yeah, again, you know, just wanted to give you, I'll share more, you know, like with the lemon, but, um, coconut oil is one of the ways I've detoxed my armpits and stuff like that because it pulls. Um, it's a, um, coconut is a natural, what is it? Um, antimicrobial and anti, um, um, fungal. And so, yeah. And hence why a lot of people, you know, men, women, cancers, things like that, you got things going into your lymph nodes. Um, you, you have to understand that, you know, these foods are doing some, some things to us that, you know, you know, they weren't by design, you know, and, and of God. And so again, he knows our bodies and, you know, um, I'll definitely share. There's lots to share, but right now I'm just going through the foundational things and, you know, I'm making sure I'm handling God's business with giving you some, some, you know, substantial, um, spiritual meat first. And then I'm also going to do the same thing as I'm going through the meals and things like that. So, um, I'm excited for what he is doing in my life and what he's allowing me to do and present these things for you. And I just can't wait because I know, you know, where he's moving us to. We're going to come into our own to where we're going to be able to grow and things like that and have things available for the community. And again, because, you know, I mean, I haven't worked in corporate America for what, almost what, six years now, five, six years. And so I know what it is to be without a paycheck. So I know what he's offering us, what he's given us to where we have to freely give to you all. And so the, the classes and things like that are available on our website. Um, they are free um, because I, I work for him and, you know, I'm not looking for a paycheck. I know he's going to, again, I know what he put in front of us. <laughs> I don't need to go out in the mist and go get anything else. Um, and, and I don't, I, I've been without corporates pay for so long. I know what it is to be with what I need. And, and so, you know, as the Lord has given me freely, I need to give to you all freely. And because it's his Psalm 24, remember Psalm 24, one, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And again, he'll bless me according to his riches and glory. And because I know he wants soul and I know this earth is going to pass away. I'm not attached to any of this stuff. 
And so, and it's nice and it's wonderful. And, you know, um, and as many are walking into their breakthroughs and blessings, this stuff is temporal so we can get whatever we need to get done for him. Um, but whatever is awaiting us in heaven, I'm excited and I, I just can't, you know, I can't wait. And so I just pray that you are blessed by this spiritual food and, you know, just stay tuned for, you know, the next um, subject matter. Um, I'm still, you know, getting things together as the Lord is feeding me. And I will just go on, you know, we're just going to continue on and doing it on a scripture basis. So I pray and um, hope that you are blessed by this and just stay fed in Jesus name.